since posting our fairly uh, popular window vent system, uh, I've had a couple of inquiries from people saying, all well and good, but how do I get an enclosure for my printer to hook up to the window vent system? So this is what this video is about. So if you've got a, a 3D printer, whether it's an FDM or a juice printer, and you want to uh, do things a little bit more uh, safely for your health, then this video, this project, is about building a quick and dirty enclosure that can get rid of those fumes very quickly, easily, and cheaply. Printable Science presents a universal 3D printed printer enclosure. In addition to the 3D printed parts that uh, you need for this project, you're also going to need the following extra components. One, you're going to need a cardboard box. Now, if you're making this for a juice printer, a small juice printer, like the AnyCubic, uh, what's it called? Photon? Uh, or the Elegoo, whatever it is, then the best thing you can do is uh, go to U-Haul. They have this lamp box, which is just almost sort of perfectly made for the application. It's 12 inches by 12 inches by whatever. You slice it in half, and you have a, uh, a cardboard box that'll fit just nicely over your juice printer and will allow you to uh, proceed with the rest of the assembly. If you have a different sized printer, even an FDM, a large one, all this requires is a cardboard box that fits over top of your printer and with enough clearance for uh, the movement and uh, the height, and uh, you can proceed with that. Then you're going to need some 4-inch uh, vent tubing. It's usually flexible. It's fairly cheap. Uh, you're going to need three clamps. And uh, you're going to need what's called an inline fan, a 4-inch inline fan. And they cost, I don't know, $15 or so. And uh, that's how you exhaust the fumes uh, from your uh, printer to uh, our window vent system. So having said that, let's assemble our uh, universal 3D printed fume vent enclosure for 3D printers. This project includes about half a dozen 3D printed parts. We have the uh, vent top, we have the vent plate or vent bottom that fits inside the box. We print uh, also uh, four feet to raise the bottom of the box up uh, off the uh, table or whatever that uh, you're going to be resting on. And then we have a couple of options at this point. There's uh, eight bolts that need to be printed. And if you are uh, concerned about the strength of those, uh, you can substitute just regular garden variety one quarter inch uh, steel bolts that are three quarters of an inch long that you pick up at any box store. I find that the 3D printed bolts work just fine. I do that at about 80% infill. And then finally there's a optional goo glue, goo, glue spreader uh, for those that don't like to get their hands uh, dirty. So all the prints were printed in PLA with uh, point, uh, zero no, just point two layer height, uh, two perimeters, uh, three bottom layers, five top layers, or whatever it is, uh, and uh, the no supports or brims are required. It should all work out uh, fine. So you know, knock yourselves out using the U-Haul uh, uh, lamp box. Uh, the first thing we do is uh, we cut it in half height-wise and then we uh, fold in the uh, flaps uh, at the top or bottom of the box depending on which half you cut off and decided to use. We fold it down uh, with a liberal application of uh, wood glue or paper glue. I'm just using some regular white glue here and uh, spread it out nice and uh, thinly but generously. I've included a file for making a, a little spreader if you want, but that's entirely optional. Maybe you need to get your fingers uh, all uh, goopy anyway, and uh, more power to you. Then uh, flip it over, and then uh, put some weights in the box to hold everything down, 
and give it uh, 24, 36, 48 hours and, until it's uh, completely dry. The next thing is to uh, remove the weights and turn the box over. And now we want to cut a hole in the top of the box uh, to receive the uh, vent top that uh, we 3D printed. Do some marking on the top to help you get the uh, vent at the top centered. And then using the, the bottom plate of the uh, vent, uh, you uh, then uh, take a marker and just uh, inscribe uh, inside the uh, hole and, uh, you know, mark each of the uh, bolt holes. And then uh, it's just a simple uh, matter of uh, taking a, a utility knife and uh, cutting out the hole. Now you can use a, just any utility knife you want, but this is uh, the utility knife that we've covered in one of uh, our earlier projects. There's a link below for uh, that project, so you can make one yourself if you want. And then uh, using the four, uh, sorry, the eight bolts that uh, you could have 3D printed as well, although you are able to use just standard quarter inch uh, diameter, uh, three quarter inch long bolts from uh, any big box star. And if you're concerned about things snapping or breaking, those uh, bolts uh, can be used instead. And then, uh, you know, positioning the plate uh, underneath uh, and the vent on top, then uh, you just uh, insert uh, the screws and uh, or the bolts and tighten everything up. Uh, and then there you have the uh, major uh, component of your assembly uh, complete. Now, the next thing is uh, the bottom of the box. There's four feet that have been uh, you, that you'll need to print uh, so that uh, the box is lifted slightly above the uh, base of the table or whatever it is that you're resting the box on. And that serves two purposes. One, it allows the air that's being sucked up uh, to uh, find a passage and not create a vacuum inside the box. And also it gives you enough clearance to run the uh, power cord out of the uh, out of, from the printer uh, to the wall outlet. Of course, because we're we're sucking the air in, then the fumes that you're trying to avoid are not going to get out and contaminate things. So we start by cutting ourselves some uh, flexible duct work. Uh, that's a little bit of a pain in the butt, as you can see. I'm having my own trouble with it, but basically you just want to get a length that's long enough to give you clearance to lift the box up and over or out of the way of the printer. And uh, secondly, to just give yourself uh, enough uh, pipe so that you can uh, uh, have a long enough length that allows you to easily lift the box straight up, move it over top of the printer, and put it down uh, on top of it. Now, once you've done that, the next thing is to clamp the inline fan into the outlet of the window vent system. And that just takes a four inch pipe clamp. Uh, I've included uh, files for a, a couple of reducer adapter rings. Uh, if those don't work, uh, let me know in the comments and we can probably easily craft you up uh, something that'll fit your uh, situation. And then uh, it's just a matter of uh, taking the piece of uh, duct work or of uh, plastic duct that uh, you've cut and uh, securing one end of that to the other end of the inline fan and then the other end to the top of your enclosure box. And it's pretty straightforward. Once you've uh, got it all installed, you can turn it on and, you know, voila, all your problems are over, your fumes are being extracted from the printer and shoved out the window. So there you have it, a 3D printed printer enclosure that uh, is uh, going to just make the eyes pop out of your enemies. It'll uh, have your fans crawling in the dust to get closer to you just so they can be nearer to your presence. And I'm figuring this is probably worth about oh, 12 redemption points for eternal salvation. Regardless, 
We thank you for watching. Remind you to keep track of what's going on by visiting our website at printablescience.com for all the science that fits. Oh, 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 oh,